For more now on Game 4, we bring in SNY NBA insider Ian Begley and some guy he found from the Clevelander. Oh, wait, that's John Jastrzemski. Uh, Ian, let's start with you. Miami was a bottom half of the league offensive rebounding team in the regular season, but the Heat owned the glass in this one, so how frustrated was Tom Thibodeau at his team being dominated on the boards? Yeah, he didn't really express that frustration in his post-game presser, but I have to believe behind closed doors, he's racking his brain to figure out how this happened because this Nick team, one of its strengths was offensive rebounding and rebounding in general. All year long, they were great on the boards, and they dominated Cleveland in the first round, but clearly the Heat, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, just a different animal for this Knicks team, and it's costed them the series. It should cost them the series now that they're down 3-1. Listen, Ian, when you're playing a team as well-coached as what Miami brings to the table with Eric Spolstra, you cannot make the mistakes that the Knicks made. And when you go through a stretch where it's basically 10 straight rebounds going the way of the Miami Heat, you are not going to come into this building and find a way to win. And if you think about the little things in this game, turnovers, a killer from a Knicks standpoint, the three-point shot in the third quarter felt like the Knicks had an answer again and again and again. It would be a back-breaking Miami Heat three. And then the offensive rebounds in the fourth quarter, you are not going to go on the road and beat a team like the Miami Heat when you play like that. Now, guys, the box score says the Knicks had a good shooting night, but Ian, Miami seems to be playing with more movement on offense, creating open looks from deep, while the Knicks are playing a lot of iso ball. What adjustments do the Knicks need to make on offense for game five? You know, getting it to the second side of the floor, I think, would help. The drawing the defense into the paint, and then you can kick out to open shooters. The Knicks did that a little bit earlier in the series. They didn't get to it much tonight. But I think with Jalen Brunson, what you're seeing is a player that's compromised. Uh, he's less than 100%. I was told that, you know, the treatment for him had been pretty much around the clock on his ankle injury, and you're seeing him hobbled out there, so I don't want to make an excuse for Jalen. He's not going to make an excuse, but clearly he's not the Jalen Brunson that the Knicks saw throughout the regular season and last series against Cleveland. As far as offensive adjustments, pray. That's what it boils down to from a Knicks perspective, and you look at what Miami is able to do. They can space the floor in a way the New York Knickerbockers simply cannot space the floor. You think about what the veterans like Kevin Love and Kyle Lowry have provided in this Series. It's Struess, it's Vincent, it's Caleb Martin. You look up and down, Miami is able to do things the New York Knickerbockers simply are unable to do. You got a great game out of R.J. Barrett. He could not have played any better today, but I just think it's too much for this Knickerbocker team, and I think best-case scenario, you're talking about a six-game series. I'd be stunned if we're talking about a Game 7. All right, so let's look ahead to Game 5. We talked about the bench scoring discrepancy. And, Ian, other than going to confession, which is what I think J.J. would uh, come up with here as an adjustment, uh, how can they make up for the loss of Emmanuel quickly if he can't go again to get more out of the bench? Maybe it's more will be tapping minutes. The bench, obviously the bench scoring has been – putrid for this Nick team for much of the postseason, but particularly in this series because Kyle Lowry is doing a lot of damage off the heat bench. That pick and roll with Cody Zeller, who thought you'd be saying that sentence right now, but it's been really effective for Miami. But the Knicks obviously needing more off the bench. Josh Hart, you know, he said uh, after the game he was frustrated by the, the officiating foul calls. Knicks need more from Josh Hart. Maybe Obi Toppin comes in and makes a couple of shots. But the bench discrepancy to me tells you a lot about these rosters and the difference in the rosters. I thought the Knicks were a deeper team coming into the series, but you look at it right now, JJ, I don't think that's the case. Oh, Miami's role players have destroyed them. They've destroyed them every which way. Obi Toppin comes in a game, he's airballing three point shots, and Josh Hort has been a game changer for the New York Knickerbockers. He's had a fantastic season. This was not Josh Hort's night, and I like the idea, Ian, that they tried bringing him off the bench, they tried something different in starting Quentin Grimes. It didn't work. The role players for Miami, overwhelming. Miami's just overwhelmed them. If it wasn't for Jimmy Butler, and you think about that injury in game two, we're probably talking about a four-game sweep. Yeah, tough to argue that as the Heat are 14-0 when leading a best-of-seven series three games to one. The Knicks have never won a series while trailing 3-1. to one. Ian, do me a favor and during the break, ask JJ if that's the dress code for his wedding. Thanks a lot, guys, and safe travels.